I think I'm I'm really good because I like to stop every few seconds and you just go, "Are you okay?" Are, did you like that? Well, I go, I go, "Are you okay?" <laughs> I just ask that every just every like, like every few seconds. Was this good? Are you? Oh, did you already finish? Did you finish? Are you close? That's my favorite thing. I like to every five to every ten five seconds. To I go, "Are seconds. you close?" You're done, right? Did you? We can go. To are bed. you done? Um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like it's harder to uh, pick up followers and new fans um, without the video, but you need the followers and new fans to afford the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Schrodinger's I thought, podcast. I thought about me and Mark getting a camera, but then I was like, I'll That's share like it. I'll have to reason. share it with Mark and we're, no one's going to remember the schedule. And so it's always going to be. A schedule for the camera, like this is when Mark gets it, this is when you get yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. Because we're not, we don't write things down. You don't have a joint calendar. Oh my God, no. What? How, okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, wait. Before we before we keep going, I I we should talk about the T real fest because then we need to talk about okay. scheduling as a couple because we're not you and me as a couple. Though I'm sure we do great. We scheduling. could do a great thing. Yeah, I yeah. believe that. Yeah. Um. So the tea we were drinking today, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it from behind me here. This is lemon meringue pie rooibos tea. Okay. Um, this is made by California Tea House. I'm I am, scared it's too hot still. It, do you want to blow on it? Oh, that's lemony. Um, wow, that's a lot more lemon than I was expecting. Me too. Yeah. Um, but this is lemon meringue pie tea um, from California Tea House. It's a rooibos. You're, for those steeping at home, you're going to steep this at 212. And honestly, because it's a rooibos, kind of do what you want. I would say like five to seven minutes. I did it for around six, but you know, the world's your oyster. Um, I don't, I'm not in your kitchen. I'm I, not gonna you, be badgering you to you can. get this dance. Are you allowed to swear here? Yes. I'm not going to be like, you fucking idiot. You cooked this at 214. Yeah. Have you know what love a dipshit. for tea? Um, we've gotten comments. I had a comment before from someone about my my recommendations wow. on temperatures. Yeah. Um, and I ignored it entirely. No, it's interesting about this tea is that it's a decaf, but I feel alive. It has a bit of a kick. Do you um, do you all feel that? Do you uh, feel that? Are you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elliot, the producer, is nodding uh, yeah. vigorously. I I don't know. I I'm enjoying it. It's giving me life. Um, like I'm like whoa. I already had some caffeine earlier today. Oh, like, okay, at like eleven. I um I have to I have to have like moderated caffeine because it does make me cry. Makes you cry. Yeah. Really. Like my heart starts beating fast, and I'm just like everything. I just take in the world faster. Yeah. And it becomes a a problem. Like it's too I've, beautiful. It just makes you want to cry. It can be too beautiful. Honestly, it can be too beautiful. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or it can be too stressful. Which is usually what happens. Like I've had uh, boss employers and coworkers be like, I can tell you've had caffeine because you're a little meaner and you talk faster. Really? Yeah. I am trying to think if I've seen you on caffeine because I don't know that I've ever felt that you've been mean so. to me. No, especially not at nighttime. It's whatever caffeine I've had has worn off. Yeah. I have a chai latte almost every day. And Delicious. It, I'll have an espresso sometimes for digestive reasons. Okay, listeners. sure, sure. I understand. And, I'm picking up what you're yeah. putting down. Yeah, sure. And sometimes uh, if that, it really has to be used for, if I, sometimes I overshoot that. <laughs> sometimes the espresso has become a problem and yeah. I'm like crying at my desk about just just too many thoughts in my head. <laughs> you're like, yeah, it could be anything. You're gonna. It cry. could be anything. Yeah. Um. Of of you know, you're you're in a relationship. I love your boyfriend. Oh, thank you. Um. Of the two of you, yeah. are you? Because I always feel like relationships have one crier and one not crier. Yeah. Are you the crier? Oh yeah. Absolutely. I'm also the crier. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the cry zone. Welcome over to here. the cry zone. It's fun. Um. Here's the here's the thing about me. Yeah. I don't cry necessarily on like day to day all the time. Sure. But I will, like, if a movie hits in the right way, yeah. if an episode of television hits oh, in the right yeah. way, absolutely crying. Yes. If, like, the other day, I got very emotional yeah. when I was, I, just because I was, I was telling Jess how much I, I loved her, and then I got emotional and started to cry. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get real. Yeah, I'm a very emotional so, guy. Sometimes kind things make me cry more yeah. than sad things. Yeah. Like, I, like I'll, re- like, uh, actually, okay, so this just happened. My, so me and my boyfriend have been together for seven years. Oh, my God. What day? It's like August right now, right? Yeah. We're, we're in the yeah. summer months. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so God. So okay, our yeah, anniversary yeah. is coming up. September. I don't know what day it is. Uh-huh. I'll be honest. Sure, sure, sure. It's yeah. whenever Tessa Vandahar's birthday is. Tessa, write in the comments when your birthday is. Okay. And is then, that a friend of yours? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, Tessa, just let us Tessa's know. Tessa's now. It's. Yeah. I don't want to say because I'll probably be. I'm sorry. I'll look it up. Okay. Anyway, it's now weird because I have Tessa's birthday on my phone. We've not met. I know. Mad. Now I'm worried she's mad. Yeah. Okay. Her anniversary is coming up. It'll be eight years. Uh, unbelievable. That's amazing. Love and so our parents just met for the first time this weekend this that's past not weekend true. That's it is not true. it is true you made it eight years and they met just now we've met each other's parents and each other's family intimately like sure we both feel in the other person's family but the parents have not met How? and i'll tell you why because he's from florida and i'm from arizona yeah and why would you go to either place without a reason mm. and they met in california <laughs> uh, of course <laughs> yeah. i had a feeling that our story was going to end there yeah um how did the meeting go it was good. It was good. It was very nice and beautiful. Yeah. But I did have espresso that morning, oh, again, for no. digestive reasons. I know, but you get mean when you're on espresso. I, I do. And I was driving there, and I was stressed out about how it was going to go, mm. and I was stressed about how certain things would go. And then I get there, and my parents, we're, we're late. We're a little late. You're meeting at like Newport, a breakfast place? Newport, oh. Cal- Newport Beach. Oh. That's 90 minutes away from me and Mark. Why did you choose to meet them? Because there? his mom, so his mom was with us for a few days, and then she was w- she went to his cousins in Orange County. Got it. And so it was like, she'll already be there in Orange County, so my parents would be staying with my uncle in Orange County. And so why don't we all meet mm. near where Judy is, kind of close to where they are. Yeah. So it took us forever to get there, which is probably amping up your anxiety. Yes, we were the, we were we would have we were late, but then my parents called to say that they're even more late. That's great. And then it's not though because his family got there early. Oh, that's a problem to get a table. Yeah, it's a major problem. And then, um, and then what was it? They called again. My parents called again to say they were in the wrong at the wrong location, and I started crying. I was like, I just started crying. Did, he, did, did his parents go, it's not a big deal, it's okay? Or were they just um, like, yeah, I this is annoying? I think they were initially irritated. Yep. But then when I started crying, then some of his family started crying out of empathy and like could see that I was very genuinely stressed out. And then so because we both were crying, everyone just were like, you know what? It's okay. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Who cares? Let's yeah. get apps. Yeah. 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 What meal was this? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? It was lunch. I think that yeah. when you have situations like that, like when parents are meeting parents and this, that, yeah. it's always at like an 11.30, 11.45 lunch. Yes. It would have been a noon lunch, but it was more almost 2 p.m lunch because of how late everybody was how how did the eventual meet go it was good but i think it was because everyone was crying okay. and so everyone was like no we have to be nice to each other yeah you're like okay like we all cried yeah we gotta really rein it in yeah yeah have you ever cried from anything comedy related yeah really yeah oh so comedy's never made me cry comedy's made me hate my life but yeah comedy's never made me cry i mean i've had like a bad show and i've cried in my car for sure I've had a bad show and um, like called a friend and been like, is it worth it to do do this? Yeah. Like, is it worth it? Let me work it. You know, I use I don't know if my instinct is to reach out to others when I'm in that state. <laughs> you turn it internal. I it's like a little bit wounded animal needs to be in the woods mm. to replenish and come back. <laughs> I like that you took it all the way to its yeah. rightful conclusion. Yeah. I thought you were just gonna say like a wounded animal, and then we went into the woods. No, and yeah, we gotta you to forage because you, you can't have any can't have any predators following you around Certainly in not. that state. No, you you're know? bleeding. Yeah, you're bleeding. You're bleeding. After a bad show. Yeah. yeah, oh, it's rough. Yeah, it's. I've had some. I mean, I don't. I haven't felt unsafe in a while, but I've definitely had shows where I was like, I was so mad and nobody was in fair with how that went down. <laughs> what What's funny is as soon as someone that I'm like, I care a little bit what they think goes, yeah. I'm going to come see your show and I had to go, oh, so it's a bad set tonight. Oh, like you're 
people you admire in your life coming to see your show. I'm like, I'm going to watch this. Yeah, that has also happened to me. I yes. almost, I, I've been in places before where I almost want to like, if someone's like, hey, I was thinking about coming to the show, I almost want to go, no. I have started to tell specifically family, no. Because like they think they oftentimes, family, and like really like people who are related to yeah, you, who yeah. watched you grow up, they think, and I don't know why, they think you're going to talk about them. And they're usually really annoyed when that's not the case, like in my yeah. life. Yeah. Well, as someone and I'm not I mean, you're not like a dirty comic, quote unquote, but you're not a clean comic. No. So when when people come to see you, yeah. do you feel a little uh, do you feel a little off put because you're like, OK, well, like my family, I have family members coming. I can't yeah. be myself. Um, That has that it can like feel annoying but I feel like I'm at a point where I'm like you know what this is what I do it's not like I invited yep. them to a school fucking play like they came that's what I do I yeah. invite people to school plays I invite yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I do I'm like I'm not doing comedy tonight we're doing um uh, just our own version just of Pippin oh just like Mean yeah. Girls Jr. actually I, I listen I love Mean Girls and um, we're gonna make Fetch a thing eventually I think stop trying to make it a thing we're gonna make it no, a thing no you're not Fine. Um, <sighs> so I feel like for a moment it like annoys me, but I'm mm. also kind of makes me want to reel into it more. Cause I'm like, I'm not a fucking little girl. You're I'm like, oh yeah, adult. guess who I fucked yesterday. Well, it's just like annoying <laughs> to me. Like I've had people be like, do your parents know? I'm like, you know, I'm in my thirties, right? Like, <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? I don't care how young I like, thank you for saying that. But I like well, great skincare. Yeah. Regimen, thank you. You're looking great. Yeah. I don't do anything. It's all that can't be true. Is that actually true? Yeah. I'm going to start doing this. I'm so <laughs> upset. I try so hard. And really? It's just like not... You look great. Thank you. That's very nice. I would say you have, I would say you have better skin than I do. I don't think that's true, but I'm going to, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to take it. I'm going to ask you what you do for it, honestly. Uh, yeah, I'll share it off the pod. I mean, I've shared it on the pod so many times. Yeah. I'll share it off the pod. But Can I, I say something racist? Uh, go ahead. For a white man, fantastic. No, you know what? Not racist at all. Such a compliment. Yeah. Um, I always say Jews bruise. We don't age well. Um, I don't think Latinos age well. I don't think there's enough information on this. Latinos. There's no good rhyme for that. Latinos. They raise in so hard. Well, so you can. We're in the sun. Well, and it it shows. Is there a good rhyme? Is there a good rhyme for it though? There isn't. You got Jews bruise, and then yeah. you got other ones, and then, then you got other ones that I won't be saying. I mean, listen, I felt my age. We were at your birthday party. What okay. was it like two weeks ago or something? I probably and um I don't remember what it was. And and I remember um Justin and I were walking out, and um I said something, and he goes, "What?" And I was like. How did you not hear me? We're the only ones on the street. Yeah. And he was like, sorry, it was really loud in there. And I go, how old are we? Like, how like, old are I was we? like, oh my God. And he goes, can you hear me well? And I was like, not perfectly. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I was like, it is just because you have to, when you're at a bar like that, it was a lot of fun, a, but you need yeah. to talk over. If it makes you feel better when picking the location, my mm. request was no place too loud no. because like the three of Whoops. us had different different want i don't know if anybody cares about this well i did you a joint what? birthday Fuck it. yeah <laughs> i did a joint birthday with two other comedians lynn molly and sophia zolan and i felt like the former guest and future guest and future guest and i felt like i had old lady requests like sophia wanted to dance and i was like where can we sit and hear each other's thoughts um, like that's what i wanted <laughs> i uh yeah i i had a old friend come into town and we met at my sister's restaurant, and then after my sister got I'm off sorry, work, your sister has a restaurant. Oh, the restaurant where she works. Oh, I was like, what? I should just yeah, she has a restaurant. She okay, yeah, yeah. Really why not? Cool. Why not? Why she not? Owns it. Anyone's listening? Yeah. What's your sister's name? Maddie. Maddie. Wait mm -hmm. a minute, that can't be true. It is. Is that really true? And when you know, and Maddie? we look exactly alike. Not exactly alike, but we look a fuck ton alike. Age like, difference, like two years apart, three years apart. Nineteen months. My sister and I are 15 months apart. Yeah. I, we were kind of raised like twins, and that can be really hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so she works at a restaurant, and she lives out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the so, like, we had dinner there, and then when she got off work, we, like, went to a bar, and honestly, we were just like, can you guys turn the music down so we can catch up? <laughs> I genuinely, I was doing a show the other day, and um, I didn't do this. But for a second, I was talking at this volume and I almost said into the mic, hey, can we just turn me down? Like, ah! I'm too loud. 
<laughs> like this is too loud. Um, and, and I'm someone who doesn't mind the sound of my own voice, but I'm yeah. like, let's just like take a beat. Honestly, though, a hot mic, if I feel like if a comic doesn't know how to do, I feel like that sounds compliment to you. It sounds <laughs> like you understand like the rhythm of how you say things and stuff like that. For sure. Because like, if it is too loud, it 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 does it will not hit because they're kind of like this. So yeah, I'm la- I'm a yeah. loud person. Yeah, I hate it when I mean this is an obvious mistake, but when people scream into the mic, I'm like, come on, what are we doing? This is rude. There are a couple of comics in LA. Um, I I I would say I I would name them. I don't remember their names. Um, because I don't know them very well. But I've seen two different comics do this where they put the mic aside and just yell. Oh, sure. And I'm yeah. like, what are we doing here? I feel like some people can do that and get away with it. And I'm going to say his name because he's, but Dana Gould does. Dana Gould does not do that all the time. He doesn't do it all the time, but he can do it. But it's usually like, it's like he has sussed out. This is such a small space mm. that he would rather just put the mic down and talk to people. And often he will get off the stage and into the audience. But he is like a master, and say, so well, it works out. Yeah, yeah. Former Simpsons writer Dana Gould. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him and me, we're I'd say we're at the same level. Yeah, absolutely. T- yeah, talent wise, I think. Me too. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of us. All I think, of us. Are we're basically right... the same. Yeah, we're all at. I that mean, level. if you just think about it, yeah, pretty much the same life experience, same awards and accolades yeah things like that yeah well i think both of our families probably say at least i'm sure dana's does because mine says to me all the time um why aren't you doing like bigger theater shows right do you ever get that question they're just uh not necessarily bigger but just like they really want me to say that this is paying for everything in my life oh yeah and then some i've had like I this was a while a long time ago, but I one time did this show in Arizona. It went so fucking well. So much of my family was there. There was a lot of other people there, too. It wasn't like was just it like my family. Phoenix or like Glendale? It was. It was. Wow. Good. Good memory. Um, It was Scottsdale. Oh, yeah. Scottsdale. I guess I did just talk about that. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, got it, in got Arizona. It, got it. But uh, it was Scottsdale okay. and it was a pretty large seating venue. I did yeah. have a lot of family there, but, I, you know, a lot of the rest of the audience was not my family. And yeah, I was there. We're like not related, multi, no. you know. A lot of a lot of people I don't know. And I literally like I only did five minutes. I got applause breaks like it was amazing. It went so well. And they were so proud of me until they found out that that was a guest spot and I was not paid. And then they were livid with me like they were angry at me instead of. (laughs) They're like, you come back to Arizona. They were like, why don't you call them and ask to be paid? And why don't you call them and ask to fly them out? And I was just like, shut up like you just have no idea what the fuck you're talking yeah, about yeah <laughs> yeah do you have a lot of family still in arizona because you said you were so, born there what's funny is i wasn't born there oh i'm sorry I was, I, no 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 it's okay i'm mostly from there i okay. was i was born i was born sorry um no, i was please born, sing it sing it to us I, was born, I can't say that rest of the phrase i was born in north carolina no way. Yeah. And then we were in Minnesota and then we were in Arizona for eight years. And then we were in NorCal for 10. So we like move, we shuffled, but Arizona and NorCal, mostly Arizona, we built like this huge community. Yeah. So those people are almost like extended family to us, even though they're not related to us because they saw so much of us like growing up and stuff That's and were there crazy. for us and stuff. And then NorCal is not an easy place to make community. So we, there's yeah. one family out there that is like family to us because they watch us grow up. What's up, Don Lins? Um, How many? I am loving the shout outs. Yeah. I, I, we better get comments from some of these people. You better you shout fucking out. comment. Yeah. Yeah. Don Lins. Don yeah. Lins. They will actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, wait, so why did you move around so much? Like uh, one of your parents my had a dad, job? Yeah, my dad worked in like corporate America, which is like military life light. And so <laughs> you yeah, sure. That's moved. I've heard that's what they say. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he was, yeah, he had one of those positions where they just moved. Yeah. And so did you have to keep changing schools? Um, you know, what's fun is that we didn't really do it that, that much, but enough to scar your personality for yeah, sure. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Sure, 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 yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, be- I blame that's why that I became a performer. I'm like, 
we're fine. It was all good. We had a good childhood. Honestly, we had a good childhood, all things considered. But that is definitely why I think I got into performing was like moving. Interesting. Yeah. How long did you spend in uh, Minnesota? Oh, not long. Maybe like, I don't even know. I lived there for a couple of years. Is the only reason oh, I'm asking. Oh, where yeah. did you live? Not as a, not as a um, I love this. You're like, let me sort out the couch. Uh, I lived in uptown Minneapolis. Aw, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, but that was as an adult. What were you doing there? I had been in a band. Um, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a musician for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, I played jazz guitar for 15 years. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, yeah. now you definitely should be friends with Mark. He's I, a musician. He loves like other musicians. Well, I feel like Mark is stuff. probably so. I I don't play anymore, but I am sure Mark is way more talented than me. Yeah, um, I'm sure you're very talented. I, you know, who who's to say? But but I was into this band in New York. I'm born and raised in New York, and I was in a band over there, and the band kind of fell apart. And I, it's a whole long story, but like I found out that someone I was seeing um had um picked up a gentleman on the side um that oh, I dang. was like not super stoked about um yeah I I also don't get stoked when people cheat on me yeah yeah well. yeah well we were like on again off again <laughs> yeah. but I thought we were on again and it turns out um you know that switch was right in between on and off in yeah. her mind but in mine it was on yeah and um and I was just like hmm um cool I don't know that I want someone kind of alternating between me and another yeah. gentleman. So I'm probably just going to slowly I'm probably ooh, see my way out like this. No, yeah. um, certainly not. And also, I mean, not to say anything one way or the other, but like maybe if he had been like a cool guy, I would have been like, yeah, let's like do this. Like, okay. let's both like be in a throuple. But um, but jokes aside, no, he he was the worst. And um, <laughs> jokes aside, I hate him. But wait, what am I saying? Oh, yes. polyamory. I just don't want to deal with mess. I don't want to deal with people's feelings. Oh, you mean an emotional mess? I thought you meant a physical mess. And I was like, ooh. Um, also, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's messy. Nobody um, finishes in the condom. Like, no. you know. Who sorry. does? Who does? Yeah. I, uh, my big issue to your point about an emotional mess, like, being in a relationship, this is going to sound negative, but it's not. Being in yeah. a relationship is essentially finding someone whose baggage is is uh, is suitable for you. I agree. And I cannot imagine yeah. you're dealing with more than one person's baggage. I've tried to write about this, too, that kind of like getting intimate with someone is like trying on clothes in the store at the fitting room. Oh, and it's that. like hard. You're sweating. Yeah. And there's a really good chance it's not going to fit. Yeah. And then it's just like awkward. You just have to that put your so clothes funny. back on and be like, well, bye, I guess. We tried. Yeah. Uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work. And like, it's just like nine out of 10 times. It's not that great. Like uh, the hookup because you don't know each other. No. And I don't mean to say I'm sure you're a great lover. I'm sure you're a great lover. I want. Oh, so everyone heard it here first. Yeah, Cotty sure said she's sure I'm, sure I'm a good great lover. lover. Yeah. But great a lot lover. of times random men are not great lovers. And mm -hmm. it's just like when you find one. Yeah. You just got to dig, dig in. Yeah. And hold on. I think I I think I'm I'm really good because I like to stop every few seconds and you just go, Are you okay? Or did you like that? Well, I go, I go, Are you okay? <laughs> I just ask that every just every like, like every few seconds. Was this good? Are you oh did you already finish? Did you finish? Are you close? That's my favorite thing. I like to every five to every ten five seconds to I go, Are seconds. you close? You're done, right? Did you We can go to Are bed. you done? I need to take a call. Are you almost I love the idea that you're a, a lover that needs validation every yeah. few moments. Is that okay? You Is good? this good? Yeah. Are you doing okay? This is good enough for you, right? Yeah. You're not thinking about somebody else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My favorite thing to do every few minutes is just go, hey, you, you're not, are you still thinking are about me? Are you still thinking me? about me? Are you still thinking about me? Are you thinking about somebody else? I feel it because I saw on your face, I saw some like smile like and I don't smile. think I'm making you smile. That didn't feel right for this moment, no. to be honest. This moment, I thought yeah. you were going to go, oh, but instead you went, oh, hmm. and I was like. Made me think that. You're probably thinking about a different moment. She was else. thinking about Mr. Turner is what I think in I that moment. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. He's attractive. To, there's. Is there I, a hair that's in there? I no, love that you I'm just keep. I'm thinking of like hot moments. Michael J. Fox in when he is like Sprite. I would have loved to have had that. Climb up that tree or. You don't have to climb very far. No. And that's what a little works. sprout. It's yeah. a sprout. Um, this was like a child. Did you have a childhood crush on Michael J. Fox? I, uh, I would say a late 
teen crush. I discovered him late, and I was like, oh. I was like, I'm small, he's small. We should press our bodies together. Yeah, obviously, they'll fit. I think about that all the time. I yeah, love press him. my body against Michael J. Fox. Yeah, very like in. I think it was like 21 in the year 21. I recently discovered the movie Mikey and Me on Disney Plus. Shut out Michael J. Fox's film career, where he helps this little Puerto Rican chick. Uh, she's like a little girl and he helps her get into kid acting to help her family. He's like a total angel in it. Is, this is a movie, not this a documentary. A movie. This isn't, yeah, a documentary. Okay. And um, it's called Mikey and me. Something called, like Michael it's J. It's that Fox. time in, it was that time where they just let famous people keep their names and shit, yep, you know? Sure. And, sure. Um, Remember that very well. Yeah. And, uh, I was watching it and I was just so turned on the whole time. I was Do just I like wildly. This? It's not a sexual movie, <laughs> but I was just so into And then Mark came to bed and I said, quote, don't touch me. Michael is on. And yeah, I yep, was just sure. like, so like, yep. I'm thinking of buying him a puffer vest, like, um, <laughs> Back to the Future. Yeah, I knew yeah. what you were getting at. Yeah, the orange one. He has one yeah. time pulled out a red guitar and sang Johnny Be Good. Are you kidding me? No. You he must did have. it all by himself. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Excuse me. I got I got so flustered I sneezed. Yeah, that is that happens to me too when I also get turned on. When I get turned on, I sneeze. Do you not? You don't do that all the time. I do it. Yeah. And then, and then it really I, confuses people. But I'm like, I yeah. feel like I'm being really clear right now. Well, then yeah. I follow up. I go, Are you okay? Are you As okay? A, yeah. yeah. I follow up with that. Were you thinking about me just now? <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Um, are you ready for the first segment? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. The first segment is called the newly friend game. It's like the newlywed game, but we're friends. Um, here's That's how it's really going to go. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm waiting for the day I say that on this pod and someone goes, we are not. We um, are not friends. So the way this game works is I'm going to ask you a question. We're both yeah. going to write down our answers. You're not going to say it out loud. Oh, okay. And I'm going to try and guess what you're going to write. And then we'll do the same thing but for I also me. I have to hide it. Um, yeah, if okay. you can. And I won't look at your board. Um there are two different questions I'm thinking about for you. Okay. Um, we'll stick with the one I was going to do before because I think it's a good one. Okay. Wait, you, but I have to write. Okay. Explain. So I'm going to ask you a question okay. and you're, you're going to write down your answer. Don't say it out loud. Okay. And I'm going to try and write down what I think you're going to say. Okay. So I'm just truthful about me. You're just it's truthful about job. you. This is okay. just your. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to lie at all. So if you. Or if think you, about anybody else. If you want to write yeah. like you're not a good lover, you can write that. Okay. Um, so. Your question is, yeah. uh, you have a podcast about being ghosted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the the alternative to ghosting someone is just breaking up with somebody. For sure. So my question for you. Yeah. Don't tell me. Write it down. What is the best place to break up with somebody? Oh, man. So don't say it out loud. Write it down. But what is the best place to break up with someone? Um, and I'll even do you one better if you can do this. I hope that you've broken up with someone in the place that you're going to write down. I don't know. Are you ready? Yeah. Flip your board on three. One, two, three. Wow. Oh, I said a bookstore. I know. You said I was like, someplace this isn't... near their house. Yeah, I feel like this isn't fair. This um, answer is not I fair. I would never have guessed that. Is that just so you could be like, hey, we're broken up. Now walk five feet home and have a good life. It's just like I feel like um, being told. Well, I assume this news would be hard for Meet. I don't know. I think it's hard to deliver. It's hard to deliver, and I would assume that this person would be bummed. And of course they would. You're a lovely gal. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, they uh, would need to be somewhere near comfort for them. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's very sweet. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll do the same question for me because I'm gonna. I'll, I'll share okay. some other information with you. Um, so for me, where do I think the best place to break up with somebody is? And I have a very specific oh, answer. Man. Um, be, I can, okay. And I'll tell you this: this is not a hint. I don't think you'll get this. Um, you, I don't I, think I'm gonna get. This. I've done this a lot. Yeah. Well, that was a fucking brag. <laughs> oh no! I just mean I've you, I've done I've I've broken up in the same location. Or not broken up, but like ended things with people at okay. the same location multiple times. Multiple times. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I have so many questions. Okay. And yeah, that is interesting. All, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Elliot just saw my answer and I will explain it shortly. But I, Fuck, dude. Hang on. I really want to put thought into don't this. Don't say it. You can't. I really want to put thought into this. And I, I, feel, I feel like I could yeah. really see you doing this, but I cannot. 
articulate what this place would be. I'm nope. gonna just go really, ahead freestyle it. I'm really just kind of throwing this in here for fun. Okay. Okay. Ready to flip your board on three? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh <gasps> my god! I can't believe I got oh that. Oh my right. god, Cotty got it. We both wrote tea shop. I thought that this is was a joke. Correct. It's <laughs> not a joke. This is the most. I this has to be the most incredible get that we've had in a really long time. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, when I lived in Chicago, uh, there was a place about three blocks from my apartment yeah. uh, called Argo Tea. Okay. And it is like a mini chain, I would say. And, yeah. Uh, I, if I wanted to end things, if I were casual with somebody, yeah. I felt that it was inappropriate to ghost. Right. I never felt like ghosting was great. Right. I would um, ask them, I would say like, hey, let's meet for tea. And yeah. then I would um, sit in Argo tea, which was much quieter. Uh-huh. So, you know, there would be no outbursts, no craziness. Yeah. And uh, and just over a calm cup of tea, just be like, you know, hey. And I I had multiple ways I would do this. Yeah. But like the best way I would do it is be like, hey, like I, I've had a lot of fun with you. And I think we have a really good time together. I just don't necessarily see us being compatible in the long term. Right. I mean, that's really fair and hard to argue. Uh, and I had someone argue I'm out of a breakup sure. before. Oh, yeah. I am sure. Yeah, yeah. Not good. I just think like so many of us are programmed to just like go find that person, mm. you know, and so even though some like you're if you're breaking up with someone because you don't think it's going to be a fit, you're really giving them a gift, you know, 100 percent. And I'm saying go, you're going to find someone who's much more compatible yeah. for you than me. And uh, it's just I don't think I think there is a pressure cooker to like find somebody kind of thing, you know, uh, totally. Yeah, I, I the interesting thing is so you you're about to come on eight years. By the way, that's the end of the newly friend. Oh, you okay. can put your board down. Um, <laughs> if you want, or you can keep it on or you. Or I'm gonna just press it up against myself. You could wish it, it was Michael J. Fox. Yeah, well, listen, I do that with that board a lot. <laughs> uh, you can probably smell me on there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you, so you're coming on eight years, which means that you ostensibly met in your twenties. Yeah, unless you're 39, which I don't think you are. No, thank uh, you um, for not believing that. I don't believe yeah. it. Um, so did you have a lot of like, did, were you, did you have a lot of like breakup situations or you found each other early and you're like, this dude's legitimate. So I like came to LA, like no one ever expressed an interest in me ever growing up. Well, you know what? Ever. Let's use, let's name some names. Get out of here, Jimmy. You're the worst. You should have seen how I great can't she remember is. remember anybody. There was one, I don't want to say his name be, because fuck him. But then, I never liked so him. fuck him. And then there was a boy named Jason Roberts that I was like in love with, and he was dating a girl that I swear to fucking God looked just like me. Yeah. And so I never did anything because I was like, you know, he's taken, and she could take me. And so, like, <laughs> was that part of your calculation? She I'm always, I'm always sizing people up for size, you got and it. like, will they fight me? Like yeah. stuff like that. Men, I feel women. like you yeah. could throw down. Am I wrong? I feel like you could. You could. I can throw down, but I have to get to a place. Yeah. So many things have to be checked off. A lot of caffeine. Yeah. No, just like, do they deserve it? Oh. And if they do, I'll throw the fuck down. But I'm not even like exaggerating when I say if I had to like pick people, not yeah. women, people. Yeah. That I would be like, I have to go throw down. Who do I want with me? I might choose you. Thank you for saying that. I it really makes me might. so happy. And, and I'm not, I'm literally, I'm saying men or women, yeah. you'd be on that list for me. I think women are born fighters. Like Let's we have to be, yeah. we've, we've get, we, one time I was in an open mic and this dude, no, this, it was a woman. She asked who here has been hit before. All the women raised their hands are and none kidding? of the men did. Yeah. I'm not kidding. That's terrifying. Including me. I was hit not on purpose, but I have been hit before. By a man or a woman? A man. I don't care for that. We were drugged. He was drugged. It wasn't his fault. We were being, we were in a mosh pit and he just, he missed. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> we were in a mosh pit. We were on drugs. He was and he on hit drugs. Me. Oh, he, he was on yeah. drugs. You were not. I, he got roofied, but he did pick up a drink from the ground. So it's kind of his fault. <laughs> what is this story? And I loved him. <laughs> what concert was this? <laughs> It was a ska concert. Do you guys remember back in like 2000 remember when ska was cool? Okay, so hold on a second. I just want to <laughs> recap for everyone. So you loved this boy. I mean, I think we loved each other. Okay, so, oh, so, so, so yeah. you, you loved this boy. Yeah. Who is the kind of gentleman right. that, that drinks drinks off the ground, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, accidentally 
hit you in the face. In the face, yeah. Who was moshing at a ska we concert. We were moshing together. You were moshing together yeah. at a ska concert. Yeah. I want to make sure that you cut this little snippet of the podcast out and listen back anytime you think, man, I've made all the right choices. I want you to listen to that and go, maybe not all of them. I mean, we didn't date. Why not? Well, the I'm truth is, is now. that he asked me out. But he asked me out in front of another male friend who made the moment so awkward, nothing happened. And I was like, fuck you, Nick. I shouldn't have said anything. I yeah. liked him. He was cute. And we got along. I like kind of a wild energy. And he a like- A wild Jewish energy. Yeah, Drew could have been Jewish. I don't know. Well, you were saying off mic that your, your type I is am. the Jews. No, they are. Michael J. Fox is also Jewish. That cannot be true. It is true. Look at us. Are you swearing to God this is My, true? Okay, he he um he converted, but he is Jewish. He technically is Jewish. All right. All right. Yeah, it, it counts. It seems Paul like Paul Rudd is Jewish. Yeah, well, he's definitely Jewish. And by really? He doesn't age. Oh, but you just said Jewish people age. They do, but Paul Rudd. But not Paul Rudd. <laughs> You know, I have heard of people using snail mucus on their faces as like a new like skincare trend. Oh. And I think maybe Paul Rudd was on it from the jump. Okay, can I say something? Please. Paul Rudd, to me, obviously looks like he has shit done on his face. Oh, you think he's had work done? If you look at him in Clueless and now, he does not have the same face. I'm sorry. He's beautiful, but he does not. It's still a really great face, but it is not the same face. As should face should we start introducing a segment on this podcast called no, Who's Had I Work Done? No, because I want him to love me. Oh, I'm sure he would. Yeah. Um, is he married? Not Probably. that that matters. It doesn't matter. Probably married. You still have a shot. Um, <laughs> out of curiosity, have you ever been ghosted? Because you did this podcast with the theme of ghosting. The pilot episode is about how I moved to LA and I dated someone that I thought was great and then he ghosted me and it was just so upsetting and kind of like the antithesis of part of my like origin story in LA. And it was also like this time in my life where people weren't really fucking with me. Like I was having... Not a good time. Like all these things. Socially went not wrong. fucking with you or like comedy not fucking with you? All of it. Okay. Like I wasn't even in comedy yet. I came oh. to LA to do theater and okay. that let me tell you, I'm looking around at the camera. Don't fucking do that. That's <laughs> stupid. Don't honestly, I'm gonna break some hearts. Don't are you Lynn Manuel Miranda? If you're not, don't pursue theater. Um <laughs> So are like, you a singer? Do you have a singing voice? No. Oh, you wanted to do straight theater. I wanted to do straight theater. Okay. I thought I wanted to travel like fucking Europe and like do this movement theater. I'm not good at any of it. I just kept telling myself that's what I thought I wanted because okay, that's yeah. all that I really knew artists did. It didn't yeah. even occur to me that like all this other stuff that I genuinely like more, like stand up, people being funny on shows was really like, a, I, went, I don't want to say noble, but was something you could pursue and yeah. honestly better than that thought in my head. Like I was like, autist, I have to be an autist. An autist. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, I didn't even really like it. I think I spent a lot of time in childhood trying to convince myself I wanted to cry in front of 30 people in a black box when it actually that, that really hurt. Having a show. I mean, as you get older, it's way easier. But yeah. like when you're like Wild a teenager, time. you're just like hurting yourself to cry in these dramatic plays and you think that's all that's out there and then you like oh like <laughs> that's not I can do other things and uh, it's actually a better idea to do other things yeah so I like came to LA I worked with this like theater group they were the worst people I've ever met honestly I've like lived in Hollywood for a long time now and they are by far the worst people I've ever met and so Holy that shit. like okay. blew up and then I realized I probably couldn't do theater anymore. Yeah. It just like wasn't really anywhere near as like a tangible thing as I thought. Um, and then I met this guy, the ghoster. I met him at a theater festival and then we had like this like hot twin flame fling and then I feel like it's like in movies. It's like I feel like I hear a lot of com fem specifically female comedians joke about this thing where they they say guys think I'm so interesting until they realize I'm just depressed and it really was kind of like that <laughs> you're like was, yeah, yeah you're like uh he found me interesting but I actually was depressed yeah I was like I was like I'm not I don't feel well I feel crazy right now and he's like it's cool and then he was like oh I think you're crazy and I was like I was pretty upfront about that I do not <laughs> feel well I've, I don't feel like myself right now yeah and then so he got out of there and that was very devastating too because it was like two nails and then I felt like uh, I felt like I got into comedy the way Maisel did. Unfortunately, you took your top off at your first set. Yeah, but um, that train ride 
of her going to her first mic where she is like drenched in rain and yeah. everything has uh, befallen her is how I felt entering comedy. Like I kind of came into it like, I don't know if it'll go anywhere. I just need to be a part of some sort of creative thing right now. Yeah. And like, I don't want, I don't have any money. So I'm going to come to this open mic and I just kept coming back and I just kept meeting people who gave me little bits of it. Like people were like, Oh, I see you. I see you doing this. Let me give you this little bit of information. Let me give you this yeah. little bit of information. Move the mic stand. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, um, you know, and I was entering it at a time, like kind of like, I would say comedy for women is better now than when I started. I definitely was entering it at a time where the LA scene was a bit more male heavy. I think it still is a bit it more male heavy. It still is. Yeah. Maybe I just found the pockets better. But I like to hang out in the same pocket. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um so I felt like it, all the signs have just have continued to be green in it. Whereas yeah. other things I've pursued, it was like I was good at them for a time, but then it felt hard. And whereas comedy almost always feels like the good thing going on in my life. That is really, that's very uplifting. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I, I'm not like paid for it. I mean, I am paid for it, but like not, it doesn't yeah. cover my bills. Certainly you know? not. Yeah. Um, one day, Ghost Detective will. I would love that. I think people would like Ghost Detective because it's like we we talk about comedy a little bit up top, yeah. but it really is like, what is your story with this person who ghosted you? Like, we want to know the details because, like, I think people think because I have this podcast, I have some huge crusade against ghosting. I don't, honestly. Have you ghosted? So yeah. Okay. I've ghosted. Um. I feel like women have more of a right to go sometimes than men. <laughs> oh, hot take. It's a hot take alert. Can hot we send take. a tweet to put off the hot take <laughs> siren there? We actually had Lynn Molly. Oops. Lynn Molly and Amy um Silverberg. Silverberg. I'm just <laughs> guessing. Amy I don't know Schumer. another I do not know another Amy, so I guess Silverberg. I love her so much. Amy She's Silverberg so is a former adorable. uh steep guest. She's amazing. And is a riot. Truly one of the funniest people I know. She's so fucking funny. I yeah, love yeah. her so much. She was like, yes, I can do the podcast, but we have to end right at two because I have to go see Snoopy. Snoopy the movie? Yes. She was like, she didn't tell us. She was like, I really have an important appointment after. And I was like, yeah, for sure. It's going to end on time. And, and then she like, gets there. She's Snoopy. like, we're seeing Snoopy with a bunch of three-year-olds and I really want to go. Um, but no, it was funny because I asked both of them separately to be on it. And they both initially responded I no one's ghosted me. I've ghosted many people. And I thought that was funny because they're both like so beautiful and kind. They're, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it was weird to me that that was that was their both their answers. And so we ended up having both of them on to talk about it. They're and, also like besties. Yeah. yeah. And we basically just were like, sometimes there's just more pressure on women to be liked, especially like by dudes or they don't want to mm. upset somebody. The guy I ghosted was like on this deserved it. In my opinion, he wasn't like, it wasn't, we were not in love with each other at all. Yeah. I, I never cared for him to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. well in my head, his name was Matt or Chris. I honestly could never remember. It was really hard to tell. And, and we still don't know. We still don't know. I think it's really hard. I think it is Chris, but then also if he were, if he walked into a restaurant, I would not recognize him. His we just did not connect on such a level. He's no Michael J. It Fox. Was, he was no fucking Michael J. Fox. I'll tell you that much for free. D he was like Now if I paid you five yeah. bucks, what would you tell me? Because you'll tell me that much for free. I'll tell you that much for free. What I would if you gave me five dollars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to give me five dollars. Ah, okay. Well, then I, we're never gonna know. I don't okay, have a five yeah. on me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess he, that's where that ends. This guy was more like Roy from The Office, like Pam's first guy. Yeah, I yeah. know Roy. No, thank you. <laughs> You're like, don't insult me. I like. I don't know what the know Office Roy. characters yeah. are. Yeah, Roy was just. I mean, just unattentive. Yeah, that was it. He mm. was like. Also, I was like at the time a host at a twenty-four hour diner that had many stabbings, and when he told Mel's? me about. No, Kitchen 24 in uh, Hollywood. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And um, I felt sorry for him and his life. Like, I was like, man, at least, like, I have, like, fun. And I'm, like, on my way somewhere. Whereas, yeah. like, he just worked in sales and got fucked up on the weekend. And, like, that's it. He didn't have any, like, aspirations or anything. Yeah. And so I ghosted him because he was just, like, it just was, like, very clear 
that he was like just doing the bare minimum to have sex. And it was like he wasn't offering anything that like it didn't even seem like he'd be good at it either. So it was like, sure. why? You know, this will just be bad for me all yeah. around. Yeah. So I did ghost him. It's a Coles changing room. Yeah. It was a fucking Coles changing room. Yeah. Oh my God. So bad. We didn't really get intimate but the stuff we did do was just like mm, this tells me enough yeah you you're know? like you're like i'm doing this but i'm thinking about whether or not kitchen 24 is going to change their menu no seriously week. i was thinking like fuck <laughs> but not fuck him just fuck my life just like ah uh, this is slobbery oh slobby yeah that's not a word you want to use no no Ugh. yeah well on that note <laughs> Because let's, I because I don't want to be sloppy with the time. Because I know we only have you for a certain amount of time. Are you ready for the lightning round? I'm so ready. It is uh, five questions. They're fast questions. You don't need the board, but you can take it if you oh. want it. <laughs> can I tell you? Sorry, there are I'm only like three people. So there are three people mic. that have reached for the board on lightning round. They're Lynn Molly, oh my God. Amy Silverberg, my and you. Ah! Um, I'm so sorry. This no. will be horrible to mix. <laughs> I I love it. Um, and Elliot will love it too. Probably not though. Um, these are the five questions we end every episode with. Um, so even though they're fast questions, you can take as long as you want to. Oh my answer. god. Okay. Uh, question one. What is a favorite ritual of yours? So mine is brewing tea. Ah. What would one of yours be? Gratitude list in the morning. Every morning. Yeah, I tried to. Yeah. How many? How many gratitudes? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Was one of them that you're thankful that you're doing the podcast today? Yes. Was it really? No. <laughs> but it was that I'm grateful for my community and you're in my community. Yes. Yeah. Still made it. Yeah. Still Listen. Made- if I, if that I was very a- Ken of you. <laughs> <laughs> if I got a personal shout out tomorrow yeah. on the Grunty list, oh, I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll write it down. Is it, yeah. is it, does it count if you force your way onto the gratitude list? If I'm um, like, yeah, if I'm bullying my way in. Okay. Um, <laughs> question two, <laughs> what's a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? Um, okay. So a few come to mind, but I think the easiest to explain is, uh, me and Mark, like watching the show new girl. Sure. And so randomly, if we're doing something like kind of, uh, spontaneous Mark will go just another just a classic Cotty Mark mess around that's yeah. fun yeah that's really fun yeah I thought you were gonna do some Schmidt quotes there no he's more of a I guess that was a Winston quote he's more of a Nick Miller if anything sure. but I'm also a Nick I'm a Nick Miller Jessica Day mix sure I'd say I've had alcohol problems um <laughs> but uh also real quick my friend Mar and I who we like grew up together and went to high school together um, we do a bit where if someone is annoying the other, we pretend to get on the phone with Mary, the Virgin Mary and tell on the other person. That is a really yeah. good one. Yeah. I've not heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's really good. Yeah. Um, question three, can you do an impression of one or both of your parents and the worse the impression, the better? No good ones here. Oh, unfortunately I have made a thing of doing my mom impression um yeah thank you for wrapping up the tail end of that one as i've made a thing of doing your mom as well i know she's um, a whore um <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so the thing about letty is that she's mexican but the thing people don't know that spanish speakers actually speak at a high pitch that's kind really? of in their head a little i'm a little it's falling off a little bit but she speaks does she actually speak that high she's my when Mark met her, he was like, "Oh my God, she sounds like Miss Piggy," and he like didn't know what to do at first. But I used to do a bit where she would call me to remind me of all the worst things that ever happened to me, just to remind me that someone Stay said humble. hi one time. Like it would be like, "Do you remember you got so drunk you woke up in the hospital? Do you remember that?" And I'm like, "Of course, yeah, it was fucking traumatic." And she's like, "Okay, well, my friend who." came with us that time says hello oh. yeah <laughs> annette do you remember i'm like yeah i fucking remember yeah, yeah we could have found eight ways to she get to had annette, to look Mom. for my pants of course yeah. yeah why couldn't we have found another way like yeah. the time we yeah. all went for ice cream yeah and brought up annette that or way just annette says hi would work i know Would've exactly worked. who annette is in your context yeah what my mother likes to do is she will uh she will tell me give me context i very clearly already have for a story so she'll be like uh, so Liz and Roy, you know, Liz and Roy who live next door. I go, you lived there for a decade. That I, It always kills me. She's like, do you remember Lupita? I'm like my aunt. Yes. I <laughs> yeah. fucking More know related. her. Yeah. <laughs> She's my 
Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it is very crazy when my mother does that. Yeah. And she'll be like, you know Dylan, right? And I'm like, yeah, Dylan, Liz and Roy's yeah. son. Yeah. He's also, yeah, I got it. And then the best part is she'll be like, yeah. Oh, you know what? What was I going to say? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm glad to know that Liz and Roy still live next door. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> all the time. My uh, dad's impression real quick is just. No, oh my God, uh, give me one. He's like very st- I don't. It's hard to do his voice. It's just like he always says my full name too. He goes, Kanina. I was walking the other day, and I saw a sparrow. Like it's always like so slow, and it's really just something that happened. Is he not also Mexican? Because he doesn't no, pitch it no, up. No, no, no. He uh, oh. he's not Mexican at all. He's like Lebanese and French and German and stuff. Very handsome. He sounds handsome. Yeah, Is that weird to say? Him. He sounds handsome. He's a handsome man. I get yeah. that. That makes yeah. sense. Well, you all show me a photo later. I'm I curious. will. Can we put in the? I have yeah. a thing where I I call him Hot Dad, and on Father's Day I post a photo of him, and I'm like, you're allowed to. If this makes you horny. That's okay. If you want to pretend he's your dad, because you're having a hard time with your dad. You're, Does everyone's he care invited. that you do this? I think he secretly likes it. Uh, the only thing I worry about is that gay men will get in his DMs and be a little feisty. But um, as far as I don't know if that has happened yet. I, I don't hope think so. it hasn't, but I don't actually know. Yeah. Um, wow. There's yeah. a lot to take in there. Yeah. Um, question four. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there a moment that really sticks with you? I mean, like every day. Yeah. It's like really bad, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. There's, is there one moment where you go, that was the worst? I feel like the gratitude list has helped with that a lot, honestly. Interesting. Yeah, because you can, the gratitude list is cool in that you can be grateful for things that haven't happened yet that you'd like to happen. Is that not cheating the gratitudes? That's, you were allowed to do that? I mean, there's no real rules. You can kind of do whatever you want. I but mean, listen. it's, I read a book called The Magic. It is from the secret brand and they are very annoying. So sorry about that, but yeah, yeah. Um, bleep it. We're going to bleep, bleep it. it. Yep. They, they do have a chapter about being grateful for things that haven't happened yet. And I feel like they could lean into it more, but um, they, there are other like notebooks that kind of deal with like five things that have happened. You're grateful for five things that you'd like to happen that you're grateful for. It's kind of like how they break it down for the morning ritual. Would and you so, say like grateful? I have a Netflix special. No, you could. Yeah. If that was your goal. Um, I do write like I'm grateful for all the shows I'll have and like all the new fans I'll make or yeah. I have. Yeah. Like putting it in present tense. And I have like I have felt like a difference in like how I present myself and how I honestly how I feel about myself and the world. I yeah. mean, I feel very good about yeah. you. Oh, thanks. There you go. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's your final question. Yeah. Um, question five is what is your favorite tea or comfort if you're not a big tea drinker? Chamomile. So you do have a favorite tea. Yeah. Favorite brand? No favorite brand. Okay. Uh, unless okay. it's like the Yogi, maybe the Yogi brand. But chamomile is like a fucking drug. Like it's delicious. It's delicious, but it's also like I've had like if I'm having a panic, I have I don't really have them anymore. But if I'm having like a really bad anxiety day, I will mm. chug chamomile and I will feel like I can feel my heart slow down. Like it is, it is uh, potent. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, if you want some lemon meringue next time, let me know. Okay, I will. Um, how do you feel? It's a pod. You feel good? Yeah, it's really fun. There Honestly, you go. I feel like I was like, wait, let me <laughs> hold up. <laughs> yeah, let me get one more. Let me get one more. I'm having too much fun. I, we loved having you. Yeah. Um, come back anytime, Thank please. Thank you. That was Kadi Asad. You can follow her on Instagram at Asad Kadi Rocks, on Twitter at Kadi Asad, and TikTok at Karina Asad Six. You can follow her podcast, Karina Asad Ghost Detective, wherever you get podcasts. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. I can understand the fear. Yeah. It looks like you're doing great. Thank you. Yeah. I just only have people on for compliments. That's yeah. the reason I do this podcast. I'm not one to be mean. <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah. you've had caffeine. Yeah. Unless I've had caffeine. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm like, why are we in this meeting? I feel like we talked about this. Did anyone notice that? That we talked about this already? <laughs> yeah. He's got a Jewish face. He will age poorly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs>